Okay, this is um, FSD 12.3.3. Uh, .3 um, I'm trying to do a uh, downtown recording here. So here we are driving down the DBP and we're going to exit at uh, Bloor and then uh, we'll see how things go here. Also trying to do a voiceover because I know that the sound quality on my recordings are pretty poor. So we'll see how this goes. But uh, if this becomes too time consuming. Don't we expect it in the future. This is a first attempt. So we'll see how it goes. So it made its first lane change. Um, and then it should be making a second one right now. But it's taking really long to uh, do its right lane change here here I think it's finally going in now what's interesting here is that it starts to signal right and it's done this with uh, version 11 it's doing this with version 12 as well but then as it gets to where it should come in it stops signaling and then it goes in so that was behavior was there in version 11. It's also there in version 12. Here we need to lane change left. So up ahead, this part's interesting. Um, I don't know if it was going if the route was going to take it down uh, Parliament or if it was going to keep going along Bloor. Um, but if it um, if it wanted to go to Bloor, it should uh, take the right lane as we after we approach this curve. And if it wanted to go to Parliament, um, it should take the middle uh, of the two turn lanes. And that would put you in the right lane without having to do an additional lane change afterwards. So here it originally starts going to the see so, so it starts lane changing here to the middle. So I go, oh okay, it must be going down Parliament. Um and then we get to this turn here and then it goes and tries to squeeze back into the right lane. So now I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's wants to go to Bloor. So it's it's taking uh, this lane and we're kind of like stuck in between the two lanes right now as you can see in the graphics so we're kind of blocking people a little bit as they're trying to go around us So now it's green and we're going and it's like cutting into this like kind of like no man's land part but whatever it eventually gets out. So at this point I'm thinking it's going to stay in this lane and go uh, down Bloor um, or across to Bloor but nope it decides it wants to lane change so okay it must be going down uh, Parliament. Uh, if you go down Parliament you should take the left of the two lanes here because basically after this turn there's going to be parked cars. And to keep it simple, take the left lane, then you don't have to merge. But uh, it's taking the right one, so it's going to have to merge after. So we'll see how it does it. So we make our left turn. And as you can see, maybe see or maybe not there are parked cars in front of us now and uh, all the cars in front are starting to lane change over and we're sitting here waiting for our turn and we see a parked car and we oh yeah we we went in pretty nicely on this so that was pretty good um being able to just lane change there uh, right after this one car because there's no one behind
So here I'm not sure why it decided to take the right lane. I, I, I actually thought it was going to turn here, but uh, I know it's going to turn at Carlton and this was not Carlton. So not sure why it decided to take the right lane here in the last intersection it decided to stay left. But uh, you'll see that after this light we get stuck and um, we'll see it recover from being stuck. So the guy in front of us took the right lane for a reason. He wanted to pull over. So... Um, we got caught behind him and then I'm, I wasn't sure if the car knew that it was stuck and it was waiting. I, I was almost going to take over, but I decided I was just going to leave it and see what it does because it wasn't signaling or anything. And as all these cars pass and pretty much almost as I'm about to take over, uh, we'll see what it does. So it's not even signaling. And you see it didn't signal at all. It just like it just came out when it decided, oh, I gotta keep going. So it didn't signal at all, it just came out when it saw it was clear. And here's finally Carlton and here's where we are uh, turning right. So originally I had the destination at uh, uh, Carlton and um, Queens Park. And that would be just basically a straight drive from here after this turn. And I realized I wanted it to make, you know, some more maneuvers and also um, going downtown. How can we go downtown without driving through Young and Dundas? So I rerouted it uh, to go to Young and Dundas so that we can... Uh, make some more turns and and go through pretty much the m most busy part of downtown Toronto. So people talk about the auto wipers a lot. Um, version 12, version 11, it was pretty horrible. I, I must agree. Um, although it didn't really bother me, I just press the button whenever, whenever I need to or I switch to the manual settings. But... Uh, version 12 seems to be better, but here you can see it's not wiping, and I left it on purpose just to see how long it would take to actually wipe. I mean, it was doing pretty well on the rest of the drive, but at this point, I'm not sure why it just decided to let all this rain accumulate and not wipe. Oh, there he goes. We make this left turn here pretty simple, nothing um, nothing much to talk about, just a basic left turn, not a lot of traffic. So here it starts to slow down for a pedestrian, which is cool. Um, then our lane ends um, and it just takes the left lane without signaling. We get to this point and there's a crosswalk um, and a pedestrian crossing and then um, it slowed down pretty well for the person. Just 
decide to keep right. So the cyclists here are taking up our lane and it's doing a really good job staying behind. It actually braked a little bit uh, for that first cyclist and then it, it signals and goes around because it knows the cyclists are taking up its space. So that was very well done. Um, the only thing is that now we no longer have that right lane. I was really hoping we could interact with um, the streetcar uh, in the right lane, but uh, it was not meant to be. So the light turns green here, and if I was driving, I would not normally enter this intersection until I know I can clear it. But um, FSD decides to enter, and I let it, I let it go. I didn't uh, intervene. I really did not want a disengagement on this drive. Um, also, I had previous comments in other videos saying that I, I disengaged too much, and I should just let FSD do its thing and, and take the the grunt of it, just to let it see what it can do. And uh, because of that, now we're stuck in an intersection with a red light. And what happens is you can see in the display that it sees the red light. And um, as the front clears and the blue car moves, um, you'll, you'll see that our car just stays where it, it is because of the red light. It's it's thinking like that is the start. Well, it, it edged up a bit here, but in a second or two, when this blue car moves, you'll see that our car does not move at all. And at which point, um, I end up having to give it a little gas. So no disengagement, but I had to give it a little gas because there were actually people behind me stuck further in the intersection. And we had to clear that intersection. So I stepped on the gas there. So um, not a real disengagement, but I had to uh, intervene a bit there to make it uh, move through that red light. So yeah, nothing else uh, happens after this. I was running uh, late for my uh, appointment. Uh, so I cut the recording here and um, uh, that's it for this drive. Um, we'll try to do some more and maybe we'll be able to interact with streetcars a little more um, next time. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.